Want the good news or the bad news? It's greasy, it's slimy, it's disgusting. Here's your mark. Fuck that. Am I missing something? Yes. I am insanely angry. I think it's what you might call student sabotage. That's ridiculous. This is your time to shine. You're gonna be just fine. It's your time and I look how far you come. your time tonight, it turned out all right, you don't have to fight a night, look how far you come, open your eyes, look how far you come, open your eyes. Previously on Chef School. Out of the blue, in the middle of the night, I get this phone call from Alex, freaking out because he doesn't know where he is. Our illustrious roommate, Alex, lost it. I don't understand how someone did that with their bare hands. Like, go piss your pants because one of your roommates broke the door and you're going to chef school? Like, get a life. It's when you drink, to be honest. You get a little, yeah. you get seriously fucked up. I want to kick him out. I offered that you move into this place here, really? and then I'll take uh, your apartment there. Fuck! into the curriculum, which is really the midpoint of the first year program. And it's also exam week. The last week before the holidays. It's really surprising how much Alex is, uh, is studying, uh, concentrating on classes. Now really looking back on the main episode at Avery House, you kind of put things in perspective. Maybe he's just smartened up. Maybe he's just realized that he's, that he needs to give her, you know? Now everything's back to normal, but I shouldn't really tempt fate. You know, I'm not saying that, like, I'm never going to drink or go out and party again. It's just now is not the time for it. So Jim has called a meeting for all the girls in our group and Dave. I have no idea what he wants us to be there for. Oh, I never know anything around here. Four girls and a boy. <laughs> yeah, it's making me kind of nervous. We were all hoping we weren't in trouble. <laughs> Hi. One of the things that I teach is uh, a course in, in style. Uh, this is Carrie Drake, and uh, Carrie is here uh, as a hair consultant. I'm not going to change my hair. I think I need a haircut. The whole point is that uh, with, uh, with hair in professional situations, you know it just has to look neat and tidy, first and foremost. It's who I am. I, I don't want to lose it. I, I like my hair. I know who you want to get in their haircut. <laughs> I believe this lady here. <laughs> I don't know if you could cut that. Like, you probably need some sort of like industrial grade pair of jaws of life. Oh, I'm not interested. Somebody like Danielle, for example, uh, is uh, a young woman who has her own ideas about style at the moment. I'm uh, good the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if I could, I would like to change. I don't want to. I want to cut my hair. I don't like it anymore. It's all yours. <laughs> I think that you, Dave, could probably benefit from a change. Dave's long hair doesn't do a whole lot for him. I, I, I can't do it. He turns his head like this, he looks like a woman. This is an intervention. It's too long. It grows back, trust me. I guess it's Joyce and David. Hey, what the heck? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You can help just about anyone. I love Dave's haircut. It looks so good on him. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> do you like it? Um, I, I miss it, but it, she did a surprisingly good you, job for the amount amazing. she took off. You look great. Thank you. Sometimes there are wonderful transformations. Today's exam day, round two with Chef Steele. I am extremely nervous. I uh, was up all night just dreaming I couldn't sleep. How would you sleep? Uh, well. I went to bed at what, 12? And I didn't actually get to sleep till 2.30. It's horrible, I woke up every hour.
All right, group, good morning. Today is exam day. You're never ready for it. You guys all ready? You all know what you're doing? You have your dishes, yes, your presentation times? By the second round of exams, they are more um, inner focused and they they are after results. It's a roller coaster of confidence. Any missing ingredients? No. And that's a contrast from the first set where essentially it's a scramble. Good luck. I'm making chicken Kiev with watercress salad. Chicken Kiev, um, it's a classic. Uh, you cut open some chicken, stuff it with rich, lemony, garlicky, salty butter. Then you bread the entire thing and deep fry it. So it's great for people on a heart conscious diet. So far, it's going really well. I think I'm on track. Uh, deep frying, you have to get everything ready, and it's the last 10 minutes where everything comes together or falls apart. Today I'm making braised asabuco with creamy polenta. I've never made any of it before. I've never touched veal shanks. I've never touched polenta. Don't even really know what polenta is. The asabuco. I couldn't sleep last night. I went through the recipe 50 times. This dish is one of those things where you put it in the oven and hope to God it's done. You have all your mise en place done? Yeah. Are you and missing anything? No. You have absolutely every ingredient? Yeah. Okay. She's very quick off the draw, grabbed everything she thought she needed, and grabbed spinach instead of watercress. Okay. Am I missing something? Yes. And he walked away. I was like, oh shit. Now she's in a panic. She's like, oh, searching around. What am I missing? What am I missing? Danielle, are you nervous now? Are you nervous? Have you figured out what you're missing? I don't know if she's gonna figure it out. She's got half an hour to figure it out, but I don't know. They're all very nervous. They're all very anxious. Everywhere else in the school, the 65 is a pass. I'm totally worried I'm gonna fail. But. In practical exams, you need a 70 to be considered a pass. You know, our standards are extremely high. We don't want to, you know, produce people that are just okay cooks, that are just average cooks or whatever. We want to produce kids that are great. I'm making English style fish and chips, and it just has to be perfect. Like, there's nothing more to it. It's so simple that it's actually hard, because it's either going to be really good or horrible. Her fish is greasy, it's slimy, it's only partially cooked, uh, it's disgusting. It hasn't been cooked long enough, or it's probably been cooked at too low a temperature. It's the type of thing that you'd throw out in a restaurant. Uh, you wouldn't serve that to somebody. My dish is horrible. Um, now it's just a matter of judging how horrible it is. Your dish is so simple. One of the dishes that really required on perfect fish, mm -hmm. perfect chips, because that's all it is. And you had neither. I know. They're a real high achiever and they've made a big mistake, they'll generally know it. So today, I am giving you a 69. That's fair. Okay. Thank you. He failed me. I would fail me. Oh, well. The good students that have really high standards already, they're hard on themselves. Kelsey, uh, polenta was the weakest part of your dish. So you never ever use stock for polenta, only water. Yeah, it just, it's not polenta. That was some kind of cornmeal dish but not polenta. In an exam situation with all the stress and all the goings on, today I'm giving you a 74 and a half. You can see the dejection, you can see the, the, the sense of failure already on their face. Are you ready for me to present yet? But on the other hand, if a student really, you know, if they're cocky, for instance, or they're, they're a know-it-all, or you know what I mean. I'm, <laughs> you're joking, right? If they really don't have a lot of experience and they think they're particularly good, it's not difficult to tell them. This is a stir-fried pork with caramelized sweet and sour ginger sauce. Fairly easy dish. It's just, you know, chop it all up and cook it. And stir-fried mixed vegetables. Why did you present the sauce and the stir-fry separate? It actually has a bit of sauce on it. Does it? Does it? Never mind. Um, Where? 
It's true, it doesn't. Um, now, if your sauce doesn't end up on the actual stir fry, it's not a stir fry. You may as well just chuck it in the garbage. Like, what are you gonna say? It, it, it was really moist in the dish um, from all the, the escaping moisture from the, the peppers and the uh, onions and pineapple, so. It seems to be on another planet somewhere. We have lots of scorching. I'm assuming this isn't a, a huge dose of black pepper. The next thing is your cutting of your vegetables are not very precise at all. One, two, three, four, five different sizes, and that's five different pieces of pepper. Yeah, where did that come from? Good question. I think yeah. this one might have broken off of something. Really? Maybe I like switched the piles of my scraps and my, my good pieces, I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Most of it was, you know, perfect. We'll pull out another one. Happened. Oh, look, and here we have another size and another shape. The whole idea is, you know, aesthetics. You're supposed to make things look as beautiful as possible. Chinese food looks fantastic when it's stir fried. Fuck that, you know? I fucking, I, I went in, I followed the recipe, I did everything it said. It's hard to, you know, mince words and, you know, make you feel good about something that wasn't, uh, wasn't properly done. You won't get a passing mark. Here's your mark, 68. How the hell did I do so bad? My juicy pork was too dry, my my broccoli was too crisp, my roasted peppers were too soft. You're right. I, I'm, I am dumbfounded, I, I, I have to say. It's not it's not necessarily difficult to fail someone. It, it, it doesn't even make sense. Like, I, I just don't get it. Because the food doesn't lie. My exam's going really well. Uh, actually, as soon as I found out I was doing stir fry, I knew that I'm gonna, you know, do good at this. And he was ready for it. He's just so focused right now. I'm happy. Richard is definitely coming out of the show. There are several students in this group that have, you know, amazing potential, I think, to be really, really good chefs. I'm proud of them. My passion. The food actually brings it out in me. Okay, Richard, lovely flavor. This just looked absolutely amazing. The meat is perfectly cooked. It's absolutely melting mouth. That's great. Something, you know, something's happening with this, this training. And I mean, it's very nearly a flawless dish. It's just moving at an incredible rate that I, I, I it's beyond me. And today I'm giving you an 86. Okay. Thank you. I knew, as soon as I saw him after his exam, he was glowing, he was so happy, and uh, I knew he nailed it. Like, I, I don't have any restaurant experience. I don't know where, you know, call it talent, call it, you know, whatever, where it's coming from, you know, but it's there. I'm making poulet en cocotte bon femme. I think maybe, uh, I'm a bit rusty on the butchery of chicken. A question mark that I have about Alex is that he's really, I think just his nervous energy have got the better of him and he's getting panicky. Should I remove the skin? Or I guess, you since I think- You're asking me to give you crucial advice at this very crucial moment? It's supposed to be I gotta go on my gut instinct, right? You gotta go on your gut instinct. I'm just gonna take the skin off. I can't stand to look at it anymore. Now I wanna encourage all students. I wanna, they're all individuals, right? They're all different. They all have different ways of learning. They all have different potential. Alex, today, the presentation really suffered. Yeah. But beneath that, the chicken was really nice and cooked. So for that, I'm giving you 80%. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. I really love that polenta. But look at it. It's so soft, and creamy. I wish I could give you an A. Yeah. I wish, but well, you are as close as you can get right. to an A with a 79 and a half. But Matthew, um, today I'm giving you a 79. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Andrew, today I'm giving you a 77. Okay. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Allison, you were really close. Very close. So for that, I will give you 79 and a half. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so glad it's over. All right, Mike. You want the good news or the bad news? Give it to me straight. Bad news. Bad news first? It wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. 
the good news is basically three of the four items on the plate were really good. Right. That will give you 83%. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. This is chicken Kiev with a watercress salad. Okay. And what was that last thing? Watercress salad. Okay. I'm glad you found the watercress. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm going to give you 77 and a half. Okay. Alrighty. I was really relieved. Considering I almost screwed up the whole dish, yeah. I hate cooking in the oven. It's always out of sight, out of mind. Ben, tell me about your pork roast. My pork roast? This pork is going to make or break this exam. Well, I had it in the oven at 375. Yeah. Um, somebody earlier asked me, can I quickly just turn this up for 10 minutes for my chicken? Right. I said, fine, just make sure you turn it back down. My fault, I didn't check again. Matt turned up the heat. I just said that, hey, I might not remember to turn it down. Like, just watch, like. It was at 550 for probably a good half hour. There was so much going on in that kitchen, I just did not think to um, to check the roast. Uh, ben said that's all right. He just said to turn it down after, and I just said, I don't know if that's good. I just said, you might want to move it, man. Like, I don't know. I just stuck this in. It just zoomed past 140. And I know at that very moment that I am screwed. All right, Ben. Okay. Here we have cured pork roast with portofoy vegetables and um, a fennel and new potato gratin. Okay. I'm so pissed off at Matt right now. Good God, it was a fuck up on both of our parts. It's not like I'm 100% to blame. This isn't good. It's not good. Did you try a piece already? No, you tried a piece. Now. You should probably cut yourself off a piece to to brace for it. To brace myself, did yeah. you say? So that you'll know, so that it's, okay. that it's not a shock to you. I don't know how he's even dealing with that. I'd like break into tears or something. Ah, uh, whatever, I don't really care. It's just an exam, right? It just sucks, it's not fair. Ben, I feel for you today. The pork is drastically overcooked. Yes, yes it is. But ultimately this dish is, like anything else in the kitchen, is your responsibility. Yes. I think it's a result of what you might call student sabotage, exam sabotage, and these things happen. I don't know if perhaps unconsciously he, he meant to do it. Why would I do that to someone in my class? That's ridiculous. On an exam? That's totally fucked and wrong. Well, Ben, mm -hmm. today is the day that you become an executive chef, because you need to take responsibility for your dish. Of course. Of course. So today, I am giving you a 66. OK. All right. Thanks, Chef. You're welcome. And my world kind of imploded on itself. <laughs> I have never done this badly in any exam. I have never been bad at cooking. I don't know what to do. Because if I believe for one second that he somehow, in some way, meant to do this, or if I blame him for this, I can't work the next two months with him. So, for the sake of this group, and for my own well-being, I have to just let this go. Aww. Okay. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> this guy. Here you go. Oh, oh, oh. Pull it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we're, gonna, we're counting how many. Yeah. Yeah. You should all make toast. Um, let's make toast to uh, first eight weeks. I feel like we're already quite a family. You know, some of you might think of me as your like sort of half brother, or you know, Merry Christmas and cheers to chef school once again. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. I, I'm not a big fan of Christmas myself, but um, it, it's going to be nice to have this break. I'm sure we can all agree. Get uh, caught up on our homework and, uh, yeah. I would like to say everyone, uh, take the two weeks, relax, recuperate. Um, I'm looking forward to coming back to this whole thing fresh and feeling as excited again as I did on the first day. It's been interesting. <laughs> it's been a great eight weeks. Thank you. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. And cheers to Chef. Yeah. Cheers. Merry Christmas. 
safe and happy holidays, everyone. Next time on Chef School. It's good quiche. Living in Stratford is like living in a fishbowl. I try not to be a gossip. Do you think Allison's put on weight? I wonder what they're saying behind my back. I don't know, maybe if I felt her up, I could tell you. I don't wear quality choices. Welcome okay. to the cutthroat world of the kitchen. Like, how can you not be scared shitless? <laughs> There's no